what we're going to be going over here is a flexible budget variance analysis and get an overview of what would be included in this variance analysis here under a flexible budget and how we'd be setting up to determine any variance analysis. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to set up a table here. And really we're looking at the total profit variance here. So on our table here, we're going to have like our units sold, we're going to have our revenues, and then we're going to have our variable costs. And then based on uh, revenues and variable costs, we're going to come up with some contribution margin. And then we're going to be subtracting some fixed overhead here from our contribution margin. And then we're going to determine our operating income. And then we can get down to determining our variance analysis. And we're going to be looking at the variance analysis. Uh, we would be looking at variance analysis for all these elements here that we're looking at on our table. So the first thing we want to do here, and then uh, we want to look at the top here where we're going to have to determine a static budget. That's something we do at the beginning of the period. And then at the end of the period, we're going to determine an uh, actual budget or actual results or actual cost for the period. And then based on our actual amounts here and our budgeted static amounts or our master budgeted amounts here, we can determine our flexible budget here. So the first thing we do is we'll go look at our static budget here and how we'd set it up. So remember our static budget, those are the budgeted units or quantities here times some budgeted costs. And that really represents our master budget here when we're talking about our static budget. And just to understand here on our table, we're looking at on a unit basis here and then units equals some quantity. A stands and stands it stands for an actual amount and B stands for a budgeted amount. So looking at our static budget here. So how we'd set that up here, we our units sold, well we just have some budgeted units here and then our revenues would be a budgeted unit times some budgeted prices and then we get down to our variable costs here. Uh, we would just take uh, for our direct material, direct labor and variable overhead here, you just take a, whatever budgeted units you have times the budgeted unit price for each of those. And then we come up with to our total variable cost. Those would be like our direct material, direct labor, and variable overhead, three, four, and five here. That would be our total variable cost. Sum those together. Or you could look at the total variable cost uh, if you knew it on a per unit basis here. You just take your budgeted units times your budgeted variable cost here total variable cost here on a per unit basis. And that will get us down to our contribution margin here. We can determine that. Then simply taking our revenues here that we have budgeted units times budgeted price and subtract out our total variable cost from it. Oh, and that would give us our contribution margin. Or we could look at the contribution margin in the terms of just take our budgeted units if you knew the budgeted contribution margin on a per unit basis. Okay, so now we get down to our fixed overhead. We'd have to subtract our fixed overhead from that. And uh, for our static budget, it's going to be a budgeted fixed overhead that we have here again. So our operating income is simply taking uh, what? Our contribution margin that we've calculated here in 8 and we'd subtract our fixed overhead from it number 10 here. So that's going to give us our operating income. Okay, so again, I'm showing uh, the variance that we'll be looking at or the difference. I'm showing it in this using this delta figure here between our actual and our flexible and our static amounts. Okay, so next thing we have to do, we'll start with our we have to determine our actual units times our actual costs. Our actual results is what we're looking at. That would be our actual units or actual costs here or prices or quantities and that uh, deal. But you're going to know some actual amount and that would be at the end of the period. So we go through the same analysis here starting with our revenues and working our way down through our operating income based on our actual results. Again, actual units times our actual costs or actual prices or actual quantities here. So this is our actual amount. Okay, so we would have figured that out here. Now we get down to determining our flexible amount. So this is the key here when you're talking about flexible budgets. This is where you're taking your actual units that you have here and you take it times your budgeted costs. So you're dealing with your actual results here for the actual units and you're dealing with your static budget here or your budgeted costs or revenues. So again, this is where, same thing for a flexible budget. Again, uh, for units sold, we're looking at our actual amounts here. Revenues in all, all our revenues through our 
operating income. So this is where we're taking the actual units here. And then for our quantities here on a per unit basis, we take our actual units here and then on a, the costs or relative costs or per, on a per unit basis, you use the budgeted amounts here. So this is the case where, again, your flexible budget, you're taking the actual units that you have here times the budgeted amounts for each of those units. So you've seen here with the actual uh, cost, we had the actual units times our actual prices or quantities. With our static, it was simply our budgeted units times our budgeted quantities or prices here. But when we deal with the flexible, this is the key here with the table, you take your actual units that you have times the budgeted prices or cost. Okay, so you would have done that here for your using this table. It's kind of convenient. You'd go through the same uh, so, uh, same calculations here for your flexible as you, the flexible was the difference here between it using your actual uh, quantities here times your budgeted prices or units here okay so we've done that so you get down to the end here and you're going to come up with your variance analysis here and then what you're really looking at here you're going to be looking at your actual costs versus your flexible budget you'd be looking at those differences here I'm showing in that delta form and then you'd also be looking at your flexible budget here versus your static or your master budget here so you'd be looking at those variances here as well again for all these different items that we have here and then you're also going to not only that you're also going to be looking at the difference between your static budget here and your actual budget so that's really your variance analysis. And just to make a point here, not to get into all the details, but a favorable variance, um, this is where it increases your operating income. Any change here that increases your operating income in any unfavorable variance what reduces your operating income. And this is all relative to the budgeted amounts here. So not to get into the details on it, but that's what you're looking at. So ref, this is how you're gonna be uh, determining or uh, working with this flexible budget analysis here just going back to the top just remember ac your actual results that's done at the end of the period here and that's your actual units times your actual costs or knowing your actual costs in themselves here without going through the calculations and then uh, your static budget that you do at the beginning of the period here again those are budgeted units times budgeted costs everything is budgeted here but then for the flexible budget, that's simply taking your actual units that you have for the period or quantities times your budgeted costs or budgeted amounts on a per unit basis. So that's what you deal with. And it's good to look at it in this table form here to in understand how, what you're really looking at, your profit analysis. You're starting out with your revenues and you're working your way all, down, all the way down to your operating income. But you have to look at the variance variances between the actual, the flexible, and your static or your master budget here. Okay, so this is what we do. Now let's move over here and let's just look at what we're talking about with this variance analysis. So you would start with your total profit variances here and that really would be like your operating income and that would be broken down between price, cost, or in this case the flexible budget variance. And, that, and also you'd have broken down your sales volume or sale volume or planning variance, and that would be sales mix variance. You'd have the revenue part, the cost part, and then you'd have a sales quantity variance, the revenue part, and the cost part. And then moving over to our flexible budget variance here, you're gonna have a sales price variance, and then along with, uh, under your flexible budget, you're gonna have a unit cost variance, which is you're looking at your direct materials, your direct labor variances, and your overhead variances. And we're gonna just be going over these three here to get an understanding of how these would be included here for uh, flexible budget variance analysis. Now we'll be going through our materials, labor, and overhead budget here to determine our different variances to get an understanding on how you would be calculating these. So starting with our direct materials, we're going to be looking at our price and quantity variances here. So we would start out with our actual costs under some accounts payable, and then that's going to flow into our materials purchase account here under the flexible budgeted amount. And then it's going to flow out of our flexible budget or materials purchase account into some work and process account under the static budgeted amounts. Okay, so here we're gonna be looking at our price variance and our usage variance to start with here. And I've got the key showing here. So 
uh, the, the, we'd be for our price our price variance we'd be looking at our actual cost here and compare uh, uh, that would be the actual quantity purchased times the actual price and we'd be comparing it to our flexible budget here this is where you take the actual quantity purchased times the budgeted price so the difference here between your actual price here and your budgeted price times the actual quantity purchased here would give you your quantity uh, per, uh, the, based on the quantity purchase here your price variance here now uh, on your usage variance that's simply taking your actual price here the difference between your actual price and your budgeted price times the actual quantity used here so that would be your usage variance so now for our quantity variance this is where we take our looking at our flexible budget here we take our actual quantity used times our budgeted price and compare it to the static budget here those would be budgeted quantity allowed times the budgeted price so our quantity variance would be our act the difference between our actual quantity used here and our budgeted quantity allowed here time and that difference times the budgeted price okay so that takes care of our direct materials variances here so now looking at our direct labor rate and price and efficiency variances this is where we're going to be working with our wages payable they're going to be in our our actual cost here and our wages payable and it's going to flow into our manufacturing payroll account here under the flexible budgets amount and then it's going to flow out of the manufacturing payroll into some work and process here at the static budgeted amount okay so the first thing we're going to look at is a rate or price variances here so we're going to compare our actual cost to our flexible budget this is where we take our actual hours used here times the actual rate per hour here and we compare it to the flexible budget where it's actual hours used times the budgeted rate so our rate or price variance here would be our actual rate the difference between our actual rate and our budgeted rate here times the actual hours used okay so now for our efficiency variance and again the key is showing over here so we would start out with our flexible budget this is where we have our actual hours used times the budgeted rate and compare it to the static budget this is the bu budgeted hours allowed here times the budgeted rate so our efficiency variance is simply the difference between our actual hours used and our bud uh, diff uh, budget hours allowed here and that difference here times the budgeted rate here okay so that's our efficiency variance okay now we'll move on to our overhead of variances now we'll go over our variable overhead spending and efficiency variances this is where we accumulate our variable overhead at their actual cost from these miscellaneous accounts and they would be accumulated here in the variable overhead account here at the flexible budgeted amount and then they would flow out of the variable overhead account into the work and process account at the static budgeted amounts okay so for our spending variances here we would take our actual cost here and compare it to our flexible budgeted amount here so uh, we just have to determine our actual cost here and then we'd be subtracting it from it the budgeted variable overhead rate here times the actual hours used here for the period so that would be our spending variance and then for our efficiency variance this is would be comparing our flexible budgeted amount here to our static budgeted amount so for our flexible budgeted amount we have our, our we would take our budgeted variable overhead rate times the actual hours used here and for our static budget we take our budgeted variable overhead rate times the budgeted hours allowed so for the efficiency variance it's simply the difference between the actual hours used here uh, and our budgeted hours allowed here so that difference times the budgeted variable overhead rate would be the efficiency variance and just to understand this budgeted variable overhead rate that would be our total indirect variable costs divided by our total in this case we're using our direct labor hours here and those direct labor hours they could be the total budgeted direct labor hours here for the period the denominator hours here okay so that takes care of our uh, spending and efficiency variances here for variable overhead okay now moving up here to our fixed overhead spending and volume variances again we take our actual cost here accu accumulated in our miscellaneous accounts for a fixed overhead here and they would move into the fixed overhead account here based on the flexible budgeted amounts here and then they'd move out of the fixed overhead account into the work and process at the static budgeted amounts okay so first for our spending uh, variances here and again this would be comparing our actual costs here to our flexible budgeted amount here so our, we'd have to determine what our actual costs and then we would subtract from that the 
The flexible budget amount was the budgeted fixed overhead rate on a per hour basis times the total budgeted direct labor hours here for the period, the denominator hours that we're looking at, and that difference would be our spending variance. And then for our volume variance, that's really comparing our flexible budget here, the budgeted fixed overhead rate times the den total denominator hours or those total budgeted hours per the period here and comparing it to the static budgeted amount. Again, the budgeted fixed overhead rate times the budgeted hours allowed here, uh, for budgeted hours allowed for the period. So the volume difference, uh, variance is simply the difference. It's taking our denominator hours here and subtract, and the difference between the denominator hours, those are total direct labor hour or total budgeted direct labor hours for the period and difference between a uh, budgeted hours allowed here for the period. So that difference times the budgeted fixed overhead rate here on a per hour basis gives us our volume variance. And the point is here, if your denominator hours equal your total budgeted uh, hours allowed here, then there wouldn't be any volume variance. So that's the key here when you're talking about that, your uh, flexible budget versus your static budgets. That's usually the case here. And then just to review here, that budgeted fixed overhead rate here, that was taking your total fixed overhead costs here uh, and divide it by the total, or total direct labor hours. In this case, we're using direct labor hours for the period. Those denominate, and it would be those denominator hours here. Okay, so I went through these um, direct labor, direct material, and variable and fixed overhead accounts, and went through the formulas here to see if they'd be helpful here. And it's just going through them to uh, see how you would handle these uh, different. Uh, over uh, looking at the different variances here, those spending and volume variances, efficiency variances, and so forth. Just to use them as a reference here and also understand how you were dealing with them here between your flexible budget and your static budget and, and your actual costs here. And just remember the actual cost, we would have taken the actual cost for the period here. And then our static uh, budget here, that would have been on, based on the budgeted costs. Uh, a per unit cost in the budgeted units that we're talking about, but our flexible budget was really taking our actual units here times our budgeted costs here uh, to deter. And then we looked at the difference here, to, uh, the, comparing our flexible budget to our versus our actual cost, and also our flexible budget to our static budget here. But you'd also be looking at the case here where you're going to have to recognize reconcile your static budget with your actual cost. Just went through the formulas quick to see how you'd handle these and how you'd typically go through uh, looking at your flexible budget here and comparing it to the static budget and your actual costs.